welcome to this lecture. In this lecture today we are going to talk about a different type of heat exchanger called regenerators. This is basically a storage type heat exchanger which is in contrast to the recuperators where we have seen two fluids are flowing either in counter current or in parallel flow at least to exchange their heat. I mean hot fluid will be giving heat to the cold fluid and either it will be a direct heat transfer or it will be uh, separated by a plate or at least some uh, permea I mean non permeable medi medium and fluids will be exchanging heat. Now, in this storage type of heat exchanger which we call as regenerators, uh, this is in contrast to that recuperator, it is a storage type heat exchanger and here uh, if we look into the classification back to our original, uh, I mean uh, originally we have talked about it in some of the earlier classes and we find that this belongs to uh, uh, I mean according to this we have here uh, this is the regenerative plate I mean heat exchangers this is where we have the all kinds of say the recuperative heat exchangers like tubular plate fin extended tribe heat transfer and this is in contrary to that one uh, we have this regenerator uh, regenerative heat exchanger and this is our different types we will talk about it in some of the later I mean in the later slides. Now uh, what is the what is the basically the difference between this uh, whole class of heat exchangers with uh, this particular type of exchanger is that here uh, we have a kind of uh, I mean same fluid uh, will be uh, occupying the space uh, in different time. Uh, what I mean is that uh, by saying so, if, if we look at uh, the regenerator, uh, this is basically either a fixed bed type or a valve type uh, and sometime we also have the rotary regenerator. So, here what we find that uh, the hot stream and the cold stream they are occupying the same bed in different uh, time. So, here if you look into this diagram, this is called the fixed bed or bulb type heat exchanger or regenerator. Here we find that this is the hot stream which is flowing through this fixed bed which is filled with what we call this space as the surfaces as the matrix. So, this matrix uh, we will talk about the matrix in details what are the type of matrix that is possible I mean we generally employ for this type of regenerators. And this hot fluid imagine that the valve is in this position and in this position the fluid is directly flowing from here and passing through this regenerator. So, uh, it will come out from this and it will go to the I mean process uh, and while going through this uh, you know this will heat it up this regenerator matrix will be heated up. Now, after some time when this uh, heat exchanger matrix is almost reaching to this hot stream temperature, we know that there would not be any more heat transfer possible between this fluid stream and the matrix. So, during that time what we will try to do is that we will allow this valve to rotate. So, when we rotate this valve, so this configuration will look like this and this hot stream will now flow through this bed which is uh, you know is occupied or rather this is the matrix which is uh, you know at a lower temperature. So, this will now be cooled or rather 
this matrix will be heated up and the fluid stream will now flow or take this this will be also you know having a changed position like this and this will come out like this. So, now this hot stream uh, the role of this regenerator basically this complete arrangement is to make this hot stream colder. So, what will happen when it flows through this bed which is at a lower temperature. So, it will pick up the cold rather and it will in turn make this regenerator hotter. So, it will now pass through this configuration. So, ultimately after some time what will happen? Now, this bed was left hot okay? just in the other previous cycle it was heated up and then we started diverting the flow through this hot stream through this bed. Now, when it has been uh, diverted uh, I mean it has been left hot we really did not put it idle, but what did we do is that we put a cold stream a cold fluid stream uh, through this bed and this cold stream uh, what happened this cold stream is this cold stream is flowing through this bed and it is picking up that heat which it has left that hot fluid left and it heated up this uh, regenerator in the earlier cycle. So, now this cold fluid stream is flowing through this and it is picking up this one. So, during this cycle of course, uh, you know its orientation would be like this and its orientation will be like this. So, that this passage uh, I mean this cold fluid usual path is diverted and this flow is taking place like this and it is picking up the heat from here and it is getting warmed. And what is happening to the regenerator your matrix? The matrix is getting colder. So, because of this cold fluid stream we find that the matrix is getting colder whereas, that colder uh, you know matrix which was there earlier is now being occupied by this hot stream. So, when it is sufficiently cold we find that there is no heat exchange between this cold fluid stream which is coming at a constant temperature and it is no more able to pick up heat from this regenerator matrix we will now switch on or rather uh, switch the valves you know in its original position. Now, it will keep on this hot stream will again keep on flowing through this bed because this has been become sufficiently colder and this bed has been sufficiently hot. So, the cold stream will follow this path usual path and it will follow this way, but the hot and the hot stream will be flowing through this usual path. So, when it becomes you know again sufficiently hotter this matrix becomes sufficiently hotter or this bed is sufficiently colder and when there is no more heat being exchanged uh, from this or exchange is possible from this regenerator we will again switch it up switch up uh, I mean uh, switch over to the other configuration I mean this valves will be changing them uh, from this position to this position and it will be flowing like this whereas, the hot fluid will be flowing through this bed. So, in alternative cycle you can see this hot bed uh, is I mean these beds are remaining fixed, but only th is thing is that the valves are changing the flow from one regenerator to the other regenerator. So, this is uh, this timing and all we have to uh, find it, find out depending on the flow rate or the matrix or the type of matrix we are using. And uh, we will try to uh, solve some numerical example at appropriate time. Now, looking into the other type of uh, uh, regenerators, uh, this is uh, called a rotary regenerator where 
this uh, bed is not the degenerated matrix is not uh, I mean in a fixed position rather it is rotating. So, here we see this is the matrix and the other part of the matrix is this one and we see this is a continuously uh, it is you know on a shaft and this shaft is allowing it to rotate like in this direction. So, here we have the cold stream and this is the hot stream they are flowing through this passages I mean this passage is meant for the hot stream and the, this is for the cold stream. So, usually they are flowing in this direction or in this direction generally they are in mostly in counter current uh, configuration here also we can see that they are in forming a kind of a counter current configuration. So, this is the matrix uh, and this matrix is uh, located on this shaft. So, when this shaft is uh, rotating we find that this matrix which was earlier exposed to the hot fluid will now come in contact when it is rotating this will come in contact to the cold fluid and it will I mean the cold fluid will be heated up and the regenerated matrix will become colder. So, when it goes again you know it is continuously rotating. So, it is coming up and it is in contact with the hot fluid and again you know uh, it is transferring the hot I mean taking that uh, heat from the hot fluid and then in the next I mean it is continuously rotating. So, it will come in contact to the cold stream periodically. So, this uh, periodically uh, hot uh, it is this matrix uh, by rotation uh, it is coming in contact uh, to the hot and cold fluid streams. So, this is in contrary to uh, the fixed bed one where we have used a valve uh, in a set of valves to uh, divert the flow where the matrix remained constant or it was remained fixed. Uh, whereas, in contrast to this one here the uh, matrix you know the fluid stream remains uh, you know stationary, stationary uh, they are not changing its position whereas, uh, the matrix will you know continuously rotate between the hot and the cold fluid stream to uh, exchange the energy from one fluid to the other fluid. So, these are the basically two uh, primary type of uh, regenerators which we come across uh, in case of uh, rotary I mean in terms of the regenerators. Originally uh, or historically this regenerator uh, has started uh, in 1816 by uh, uh, by in an air uh, uh, by Starling uh, air engine uh, hot air engine and uh, gradually it has been adopted in different refrigeration uh, uh, systems particularly in cryogenic we find plenty of application of this uh, regenerative type of heat exchanges I mean heat exchanges. Uh, in particular we have seen that uh, there are Starling cry coolers, there are GM cry coolers, there is uh, uh, pulse tip cry coolers and all this type of cry coolers are basically the regenerative cry coolers, but we ma mainly use the uh, fixed bed type heat uh, regenerators in those kind of uh, uh, cooling systems. But otherwise uh, in uh, large scale engineering also in uh, I mean the rotary type heat exchangers are in use. So, uh, now, if, if we look into the particularly to the surfaces uh, that are used uh, in uh, this uh, uh, regenerator particularly we call it as the matrix or the packing geometries uh, those are used in uh, such kind of regenerators are uh, like this we can have the cross rod uh, matrices. So, this has been uh, I mean this is a uh, uh, one of the uh, very old I mean uh, type of the packing materials where the random uh, the, this uh, cross rods or the rods are randomly uh, oriented and they can also be put in inline 
configuration or they can also be put in a staggered configuration as we have seen. Uh, this has been taken from the case in London's uh, uh, compact heat exchanger group. So, these are some of the uh, uh, primitive type of uh, you know uh, uh, packing materials or packing geometries meant for these regenerators. Other than that, uh, we have uh, also uh, this uh, open screen matrices or uh, this is also used I mean uh, as uh, regularly we use uh, this type of open screen for the uh, matrix uh, or regenerated material, packing material. So, uh, the next uh, is uh, another uh, commonly used material is uh, uh, randomly packed spheres or loosely packed spheres. Uh, I mean, uh, we have the lead or copper shorts of particular diameter depending on the application we can use it say from 2 to 3 mm diameter uh, shorts will be uh, there uh, to as randomly it will be uh, packed in a pipe inside the pipe and through which the fluid will be flowing. So, usually what we look for is uh, basically uh, I mean the large heat transfer surface area per unit volume, I mean low uh, pressure drop and uh, obviously high heat transfer coefficient between the fluid and the material and of course, uh, we needless to say that uh, it should have a large uh, heat capacity or the CP should be high. So, MCP uh, is the heat capacity of this material. So, it should have uh, mass of this uh, I mean uh, uh, this uh, CP uh, though we have we, 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 we do not have any problem with the mass of this material, but uh, as we know that the CP being a uh, function of temperature. So, we have to see or look uh, we have to be careful particularly in case of cryogenic applications that it is having considerable amount of uh, specific heat at low temperature because we know that uh, the CP uh, of the uh, material varies with the temperature particularly at low temperature uh, CP becomes considerably low. So, we have to take uh, uh, I mean make a notice or take a notice of that one while designing the uh, uh, regenerator for particularly for the cryogenic applications. So, uh, if we now go to uh, the I mean what are the formulas or like what are the correlations that we should use for the uh, packed bit. Here we have uh, I mean packed uh, bit spheres uh, we have uh, given the correlations. So, here the heat transfer coefficient uh, uh, as we know that uh, we need to have a high heat transfer coefficient as well as low friction or the low pressure drop. So, it is important to have high heat transfer coefficient and low pressure drop. So, we at least to know what are the heat transfer and pressure drop characteristics. Here in this case, uh, in case of packed bed, uh, we have this correlations uh, for the cold, it is given in terms of the cold 1 J factor and it is related to the Reynolds number. We will come to the definition of this Reynolds number or the characteristic dimension of this uh, uh, I mean spheres, packed spheres. Uh, later on. So, here for uh, the Reynolds number we get uh, Re for Re less than 1000 and also we have correlations uh, available for Re greater than 100 in the 1000. So, we have these two correlations uh, depending on the Re values uh, we have to use uh, either this one or we have to use uh, this uh, correlation for the friction factor. And, uh, that is as we know that it is important for the calculation of the pressure drop. So, now, uh, when we go for the uh, I mean uh, heat transfer or the pressure drop calculation, we understand that we have to calculate the Reynolds number and uh, for the Reynolds number, what is important is the characteristic dimension of the uh, system. And here in this case, the equivalent diameter 
uh, for this packed bed uh, spheres is basically given by d e or I mean the equivalent diameter it is defined as the uh, free flow heat transfer 4 times free flow heat transfer divided by the uh, heat transfer area per unit length and it is uh, you know uh, finally correlated to this uh, correlation I mean this is where this E v is basically uh, the void uh, available inside this uh, you know packed sphere and then d s is the uh, mean diameter or the average diameter of these uh, spheres. So, this is the average diameter uh, I mean there are, uh, it, it is not possible that all these uh, uh, packed spheres will be of similar dimension. So, we take the average uh, uh, average diameter of this uh, packed spheres and then we calculate the I mean um, uh, this void and we correlate it to this uh, equivalent uh, I mean the diameter of this uh, packed sphere uh, uh, regenerated bit. So, next is uh, when we know the equivalent diameter you know, we can uh, try to calculate uh, the mass velocity as we have learned in our in case of the, uh, the heat exchangers uh, also that uh, it is it depends on the mass flow rate the fluid that is flowing through this uh, uh, packed bed and the free flow area again it is appearing here this free flow area uh, now can be uh, correlated to the frontal area and to the uh, void. So, this E v is the void and A f r is the frontal area of this packed bed say if it is a uh, like a, a tube which is filled with this packed uh, you know the spheres are uh, randomly uh, packed spheres and this is this becomes the uh, frontal area this cross sectional area becomes the frontal area of this uh, regenerator and the mass that is flowing in or out that is the basically the mass flow rate associated with this one. So, we have the mass velocity, we have the equivalent diameter. So, we can easily calculate the Reynolds number for this system. So, now once we have the mass velocity, we can uh, calculate the pressure drop uh, in terms of the Reynolds number because the Reynolds number can be easily defined on the basis of this mass velocity and d e and another parameter which will be of our importance uh, that is the uh, surface area. So, this surface area is basically uh, related to uh, this uh, uh, d s or the average diameter of the uh, or the mean diameter of the sphere and this is again correlated to this uh, void and the V 0 is the volume uh, associated with uh, this uh, regenerator. So, uh, all this uh, will be finally, uh, correlated uh, or can be used uh, uh, in appropriate time when we uh, design uh, or simulate uh, these uh, uh, regenerators. So, now uh, with this information we will now proceed to the uh, other uh, some of the I mean uh, recent uh, or the uh, geometries uh, which are regularly in use uh, high performance. Uh, this is a perforated uh, plate actually this is some of the perforated plates, but uh, in case of this is a uh, uh, regenerator we will have only this much it is particularly this particular uh, uh, perforated plates are meant for uh, two fluid stream heat exchangers, but if we remove this portion. Uh, or if we remove this outer section, uh, this can also be used as a regenerator with appropriate uh, spacers in between the plates. So, this is basically made out of uh, copper and uh, it is finally, it has been uh, coated with the silver. So, there is a uh, there is a recent uh, development in the materials uh, science where which allows us to which allow us to you know uh, uh, use uh, this uh, metal foam as 
the regenerator uh, material. Here we have uh, this is often called the metal sponge and this metal sponge is uh, basically a open porous or it can also be a closed uh, cell. Uh, so, basically for regenerative application we uh, use it uh, for I mean the open cells are used and it has different kind of uh, porosity and uh, pore density. So, this is uh, basically uh, by porosity what we mean that gives the relative density of this material and the pores you can understand that these are having larger pores as compared to this one and these are having still smaller number of pores. So, these are basically uh, uh, this is these pores are defined as the PPI pores per inch and this is nearly about say 5 to 10 pores per inch whereas, this is about 20 ppi and this is nearly 30 ppi uh, uh, these are copper forms. So, porosity is uh, uh, porosity can be varied uh, between a wide range and uh, typically of the order of 60 to 65 percent uh, porosity is uh, uh, looked for the uh, regenerative materials uh, for this uh, uh, when uh, metal foam is used uh, as the uh, regenerated material. So, these are some of the recent addition into this uh, uh, regenerated uh, material uh, packing geometries, but uh, we will now with this basic information go to the analysis part uh, where we will find that this same matrix is usually uh, you know uh, I mean the fluid is flowing say in one cycle from this direction to this direction. So, the hot fluid will be flowing from say this direction to this direction and this hot fluid will in turn uh, heat it up this matrix and in the next cycle we will find that the cold fluid uh, is flowing through this direction. So, this cold fluid will pick up that heat it has left in the earlier cycle. So, this regenerated is now hot and the cold fluid is passing uh, through this one and picking up that heat while moving out from this to this direction. So, the same fluid uh, is you know going in one cycle leaving its heat over here and in the next cycle it is moving from this direction to this direction picking up that heat. So, basically that is how this storage type of heat exchanger works I mean it is basically allows the fluid to store its energy here and then in the other cycle it picks up that uh, heat it has left in the earlier cycle. So, that is how it works, uh, but uh, while uh, writing the uh, governing equations, we uh, def, I mean uh, make it into two parts. I mean, for one for the fluid and one for the solid. So, in the solid part, we will write uh, this equation, and for the fluid part, we write this equation. So, detailed discussion of this uh, uh, equation will be taken up in the next class. Thank you for your attention.